Okay, I'm about to bring on my co-host, who was very uh, instrumental and uh, very much uh, enlightened me about a lot of things. He's become a close friend to me and like a brother. Brother Tariq P. Alexander. Hotep, sisters and brothers. We have a very informative lecture for you this evening with our guest speaker, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen. Dr. Ben will be lecturing on Africa and Western civilization. For those of you who are familiar with Dr. Ben, you won't be surprised at what he has to say. For those of you who are not familiar with Dr. Ben, I ask that you listen very closely and critique his message and not the messenger. After Dr. Ben lectures, we're going to have about a 35-minute question and answer period. During this question and answer period, I'll ask that you line up behind a microphone here in a single file and that you limit yourself to one question per person. We don't want to wear out our elder. Before I give you the bio on Dr. Ben, I must take this time to introduce some people who have been very instrumental to me and helping me put this program together. They're not members of the police department, but they were very inspiring nonetheless. So when I call your name, please stand and would you please help me by acknowledging them. Mr. Vance Hinton. <laughs> Mr. Hampton Ricard. And this sister, I have to mention her name. Uh, she, this wouldn't be going on if it wasn't for her. Uh, the sister's name is Lorraine Corelli. And also, Sister Pat Stevens. I have one more person that I want to acknowledge, and I'm going to ask her to stand. See, I'm using Save It Up for last, but she, by no means is she the least. She's inspired me all through my life. Follow her everything, for she bared me life. Would you please help me acknowledge my mother, Miss Amy Alexander? <laughs> Yosef Ben Yakinen, the son of Julia and Christian Yakinen, the father of 12 biological and six adopted children, husband of Gertrude M. England was educated in the public schools of Brazil, the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Cro Croix, and Puerto Rico. He received a Ph.D. in cultural anthropology in Cuba and a Ph.D. in Moorish history in Spain. He has also received his LLB law degree. Dr. Ben is also an architect. Dr. Ben, as he's so affectionately known, has practiced law in the ancient, excuse me, in, in assistant, as assistant prosecutor in Puerto Rico and has also worked as a civil engineer for both Puerto Rico and the United States. From 1945 to 1970, Dr. Ben was the chief of the African Desk of the United Nations Education Scientific Cultural Organization called UNESCO, dealing with the cultural anthropology, historical, and archaeological information. He's also served as a civilian advisor to the permanent African mission of the United Nations from 1957 to 1964. Dr. Ben has taught us, Dr. Ben has taught at numerous universities in Africa, the Caribbean, North America, and also South America. Dr. Ben is presently a professor at Al Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt, recently retired from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Dr. Ben is the chairman of the Akabulin Foundation, Akabulin Books and Educational Materials. He is an author of 28 published books, 16 unpublished books, and a six-volume encyclopedia on Africa. Dr. Ben is presently conducting an educational tours to Egypt and the Nile Valley, which I and is presently, digging, is presently directing the archaeological dig in Aswan, Egypt. Dr. Ben recently celebrated his Jubilee year in Egypt, March 1939 to March 1989. Dr. Ben is a special advisor for the festival in Aswan, Egypt, 1991. 
the first African Nubian festival ever in Egypt. We are most fortunate to be in the same space as this multi-genius. Our elder, our brother, I give you Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I probably should have started with a, an African greeting, however, which one should I pick out when we are all Africans and we may have different languages? So to make my lecture all inclusive and conclusive, let me start by expressing my appreciation for the guardians having brought me here to speak to them, and then they will speak in turn to me. Let me start out since the guardian would protect me, and this is one time when no one will mug me when I, this is the time they should try. <laughs> I know I will have ample protection. But let us start out with law itself. I wonder why it is that we have to struggle so often in every area of life that we find ourselves. As we go up, and that's a question mark, the harder it becomes and many people say it's because we are black. Quite to the contrary, it's because they are white. I remember someone told me, they, as a matter of fact, they asked me, where was I during the blackout? And I said, no place. And he said, how do you mean? I said, there have never been a blackout. And then they tried to tell me what time in New York they had a blackout. And I said, no, they had a light out. <laughs> if, you take off, if you take off the lights in here, it'd be black. Because it was always black. They put light. Black is never out. Black is always in. And so we start to talk about law. But let's talk about law. This is the best place to start with the guardians. From whom do we got, get the law? Did we get it from someone named Moses? Not at all. That is a Jewish uh, story, allegory. Has nothing at all to do with truth. Now that caused a lot of you problems. Because when we're talking about Moses and the Ten Commandments, where is he getting these Ten Commandments? In a place called Egypt. And the last time I looked at Egypt, and that was last Friday, it was still in Africa. <laughs> but look, Moses is living in a society where there is law. In Egypt, there was a system of law when Moses allegedly was born around the 18th dynasty. He was born after Akhenaten had already died. There is a set of laws they call the admonitions to goddess Ma'at or the negative confessions out of which Moses adopt 30, uh, 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 10 out of 42, leaving 32 more. There is a law that Moses himself is charged with killing murder, killing the soldier of the Pharaoh. Of course, they don't give us the name of the Pharaoh, but based upon the time period that they're talking, it must have been Ramesses II or his father, Setai I, or at worst, his son, Asakana. He had over uh, 42 sons. Nevertheless, the laws that he's supposed to get, those 10, were already taught for umpteen years, it was taught in the Grand Lodge 
of Luxor that he went, um, Luxor, uh, by the way, is Waset. They were taught at the Grand Lodge at Saqqara, where even Abraham wasn't born. Even the, the, the name Jehovah didn't exist yet. There was no God named Jehovah, no God named Jesus, no God named Allah yet. When the Africans along the Nile, and in particular at the Grand Lodge of Saqqara, was teaching the concept of law and order. If you doubt me, then they said, the proof of the pudding is not in the smelling, but the eating. You then go and get a copy of the Book of the Common Forth by day and by night. And that precede, there was no Genesis yet. I am talking about the book that started before even the dynastic period. That will carry us back to 6,000 before the Christian era. And you will find it there in a section called Osirian Drama. I know that you all are using this book since it's a black book, and I'm just trying to refresh your memory. <laughs> I, 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 I know that you prefer another book called uh, the Old Testament or the book of Genesis, but before God made the world, I'm talking about when we were making the world. I see, since the God that you're dealing with is Michelangelo's cousin, I, I don't want any of you to get angry because I was coming through the hall and I saw this blonde man, uh, blue eye, golden hair, uh, not an Italian, and uh, I wanted to know who it was and somebody said that Jesus. And I said, boy, he suddenly changed. <laughs> From the time you said that he came down with Mary into Egypt to hide, from uh, some king up there was planning to kill him, and he's going to hide among all these black folks in Egypt. <laughs> now, uh, I don't need to go far because if he's looking like he looked and hiding among all these black folks, and the king sent his soldiers to find him and can't find him any place, <laughs> either he's a chameleon that changes with the uh, decor, or he's a brother. <laughs> now I know that you all can't accept him as a brother. Michael Jackson can't, or <laughs> and Jesse Jackson can't either. But nevertheless, let's keep going. Law and order, you read them at least every Sunday, Saturday, or Friday, depending if you're. Jews, Christians, or Muslims, and other religion, and you are all of these things. Let us go back to even the concept of the only true God that you constantly speak of and fight each other about. You attribute the only true God to either Allah, depending if you're Muslim, or Jehovah if you're uh, a Jewish or Hebrew, and Jesus the Christ, if you are Christian. If that is so, what happened to Akhenaten's one and only true God, Aten, that was practiced before Moses was born, before there was a Jesus, or before the, uh, there was anybody called Allah by a person by the name of Muhammad, or Muhammad uh, 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 of, of Arabia. Law and order again, let us go. There, natural laws as well as the laws developed by man to deal with the phenomena of life around him, material and otherwise. We tend to call it science, tend to call it mathematics and so forth, but nevertheless the, our ancient brothers of the Nile, not only in Egypt, Egypt is the last of the major civilizations along the Nile. It's where the Africans reach their zenith. But the Africans along the line call that the law of opposites. That nothing exists without an opposite. So many of you who are talking about if it were not for the devil, I would be a good person. I would. But I don't want the devil ever to go away. Because I would have nothing to 
check whether or not I'm good or bad. Since you talk about the devil being so bad. And it's strange that I have never seen a white devil. Yet I caught hell by the white people from the day one. My first contact with my first contact with the Greek is trying to bring him out of his cave. And I've paid for it ever since. As Professor Clark said, I invited him to dinner and became the meal. <laughs> well, let's go on law on order. <laughs> if I tell my story academically, using all the different highfalutin words, to satisfy the other side, it would be appreciated if I tell it in the language of my people. Then it's another thing. But since I don't have a habit of eating downtown, I eat uptown. I'm Harlem boy. Uh, <laughs> I would have eaten at McDonald's or One Step Down or something if I was a Brooklyn boy. Uh, when I when I come to Brooklyn, you understand. <laughs> I know you all don't understand where the places I eat because the management and ownership happen to be African, and you people don't eat that kind of way. Now, as we are talking about law and order, it was law and order in the highest degree that makers came come up with a language called Meduneta. We came up with mathematical science, the figures you could see, not only at the Grand Lodge of Saqqara, which is basically gone now, but the remains of the Grand Lodge in Luxor. Something bothered me seriously. Those of you who call yourself Masons and Elks and Odd Fellows and all that, you can be found constantly all over Israel, Jerusalem and other places. But it's strange that in your rituals you say the Grand Lodge of Luxor is the Mother Lodge, but you are never in Luxor. You go to Israel where they say, we believe there was a Grand Lodge here. But I am carrying you to Egypt where I don't believe it. I show you, here's the Grand Lodge. You said that King Solomon is the father of Freemasonry. How could it be? How could it be when the Grand Lodge at Saqqara is from 3000 and odd BC and Solomon is not until 970 BC? You got problems. You have the problems, not me. Because you have to prove to somebody else that you who give to mankind civilization have to wait until a woman named Diane Ravitch tells you you can't listen to Jeffries. But what you have to understand with law and order, I'm still dealing with law and order, is that when you were designing the concept of interstellar space. When you were given the world symbols, and there's a man just wrote a book against symbolism, you gave to the world that which Europe cannot do without. Let us examine Europe right here in what is called America today, in terms of law and order. We will go to the Supreme Court that dispenses just this, I may need to spell it for you. J-U-S-T, that's one word. And the next is this, T-H-I-S. And you are angry because you don't get just this. You are looking for just this, J-U-S-T-I-C-E. Nobody promises you that. For when you see the scales at the United States Supreme Court building. One scale is up and the other is down. That is just this, not just this. On the other hand, when you look at the justice scene, Goddess Ma'at, 
in any of the tombs in, in, in Egypt or in Sudan or in Ethiopia, you see Goddess Ma'at holding the scale, both scale at the same level. That's just this. You see her with a symbolic feather in her hair, in her head, an ostrich feather. And you see the caption saying, the heart of the deceased must weigh the exact amount of the feather of fruit. And then they show you a symbolic animal called Amnut, the head of a crocodile and the body of a lion that is supposed to eat the heart if the heart weighs more or less than the feather of truth. The United States have copied that symbol. The United States have copied another symbol of law and order. Look on your dollar bill. On the upper side, there is the House of Fire pyramid. You see the ever seen eye of Horus, which you call the um, evil eye. I mean, the European got you believing that anything belongs to you, something wrong with it. Evil eye. It is the left eye symbolically of Horus. That's the way the story goes. It has nothing to do with evil. And then you see the sun burst, symbolic of God Ra. Like the ancient Africans used everything around him to describe his situation in terms of law and order. It's because of law and order of the stellar space, the movement of the moon, the sun, the stars, and other planets, the African was able to plot their courses, plan their movement, and thus create the first system of marking the movement of these elements, otherwise called a calendar. And I go back to 10,000 BC. That's more than 7,000 years before Adam or Eve or Steve. <laughs> now, with all of this, and this, these aren't uh, prophetic statements by myself from any special work. You can come with me as others have come, there are many in here who have come with me, to Egypt and to Ethiopia and Sudan. And I've shown you where it is. And it's open to the public at large. But then you come back. You come back and forgot that not only did the African start at the 10,000 year or stellar calendar, but they revised that and refined it to 365 and a quarter day each year. And thus made what is called the solar calendar, one based upon the sun in relationship to the earth and the moon and else. And that was 4100 before the common era, which is stated as the first beginning of the dynastic period. Don't get it wrong that Egypt started with the di dynastic period, no. Egypt was reunited during what is called the dynastic period as stated by high priest Manetho. Again, I refer you to these documents. These are written. They were written before there was a book called Genesis. Written before the first Jew, Abraham, was born around the 13th dynasty, 1700 before the common era. Yet we fight each other over being Jewish, being Christian, being Muslim, as if that's important. Here you are, started man's kind civilization. I'm not trying to oppress you, but frankly, if I, I want to speak really like homeboy, uh, most of you, most of you gonna leave. <laughs> Cause you, if you get in the bar. On a, on a Saturday night, that's my language. But um, of course, I got to make it good. The chief is here, I got to show him respect. <laughs> but I am wondering, we got a black mayor. Somebody told me that. And uh, somebody said, was uh, 
I, I, you know, Wrangell live in a building. I stay when I'm in the state. I stay in a building in, in a rich black people bill. It's called Lennox Terrace, and uh, Wrangell live upstairs, and and uh, I think the mayor live a little way down the street from us. And when the boat came back the day from Israel, I saw Mr. Wrangelstein, and I. And uh, so I said, I said to Mr. Rangelstein, how will Mr. Deckenberg? And uh, well, it must be because I found that each of them had a yarmulke for each week. Uh, but all right. Now, don't say that I'm anti-Jewish. I was born in the Jewish religion as a falasha. And there were no white Jews yet. Well, you don't want to hear that, I know. Uh, but then I wonder, how come we don't have a black police chief? Uh, I don't think you're against being chief. Uh, chief uh, you, you won't be against being commissioner. If you gone that far up, why not the next step? We always got to balance it out. Huh? How come? Why we got to balance it out? Everybody comes in, appoint their people to everything. How come the first... In other words, between her last period and this one, when she noticed she doesn't have a period and she know she was only going with one man, let's call him Joe. <laughs> if I want to be a little black, I would have called him Mo. <laughs> because most black folks name men name Mo anyhow. And she become cognizant of the fact that she ha doesn't have a period that she's pregnant. But she was only going with this one man. She had an immaculate conception because she knows she could not be pregnant for any other man because only one man she went with during that period. That was the immaculate conception and the virgin birth was because if she touched no other man but that same man, until she gave birth to a child, that was considered the virgin birth. If you go, don't go with me. Go by yourself to Abydos. Go into that room. You don't need me to be there. And see how the early Christians tried to chop, 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 chop out the evidence. Go out to all the temples and see how the, they try to destroy the information that I'm talking to you about and other people will talk to you about. And because we don't know these things, our, our story, not his story. You know, his story was his story. Drop the second S, you got his story. But I'm talking about our story, which have not been told correctly since the Greeks came there as students. Let us go back to a little history again and go to dates. Why do you think they don't have dates in the Bible? They can't have dates. Because you will find the lies. I know that you don't like the word lie. But if you're not telling the truth, you're lying. I mean, I'm, I'm a simple country boy. I, I don't know the, the beauty and the highfalutin words. You understand what I mean? <laughs> I listened to a minister the other day said, oh wait, I listened to Farrakhan the other day. And he was talking about, we have little bees up here because we had to be thrown in the jungle. Our color got black because of the same thing to protect us from the sun that we originally had straight here. I said, somebody gone sick. <laughs> I mean, look, there comes a time, you know, there comes a time where we don't play around. I heard a minister said, to me, it's the time of massive ignorance. He said, he doesn't pick it and do all these things like most people. I guess like the PF, PBA he doesn't put, pick it. No, they, they, told me, they told me the PBA pickets now, only black mayors. 
And uh, see. I guess you all must have heard that my mouth don't have Sundays. Right? So if I talk about God, so you know I talk about you. I, I, when I say God, I mean my father. I talk about God, that's, that's mama. Because somebody asked me, who you pray to? I said, my woman. Black. I had to tell immediately black. Because I don't want nobody to get a misunderstanding. But how, how could you believe in a woman as, as God? I said, when last you see a man giving birth to anything? In spite of Steve. <laughs> all right, so you understand that I'm controversial. And you all knew it was controversial. But I got documentation and proof. I could prove it. Everybody in that audience give birth to anything, I bet you it's a woman. <laughs> now, anybody want to take the bet? Anyone wants to take the bet? I give in 20 to 5. Chief, don't know. Don't, I'm, I'm not gambling. <laughs> I'm not gambling, I'm just wagering. <laughs> All right, we continue. You see, <laughs> what we have to understand in all of this is when the Greeks came and the Persians are the one that allowed them in. We have to go back and ask the question for those of you who are doing the stupid dance at college, shuffle dance and talking, I'm a Greek, I'm a freak, I'm a Greek, I'm a freak. <laughs> Just remember. Greece, there is no Greece until 1,000 before the common era, B.C. And there is a single Greek writer until Homer comes to Egypt to learn to read and write. And then, in 833, wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, the first piece of writing out of Greece. There was no, that time Greece was called uh, Pyrrhus. There was no other state in Europe before that either because Etrusca, now called Rome, was not in existence before 1000 BC either. 1000 BC, the Africans were already in the 19th dynastic period, meaning that they had had a civil war along the Nile and had come back together, had designed and built all the pyramids that you see there. Not a single Jew was born yet. Abraham. Abraham was born according to Torah in a place called Ur in Chaldea. No better than 1700 before the common era. That would be the 13th dynasty. The first pyramid was designed and built by Inhotep in the third dynasty and the last, the 82nd pyramid was built at the end of the 12th dynasty. How can you build a pyramid and you ain't born yet? You notice it's not mentioned in Torah. It is Jewish folklore. And let us use it. Even so, your Bible, yours, because you got us one right now. Some of you walk in the pack of book so you don't get hurt. But a star may fall on your head. In your book, it says that Moses got frustrated with the Lord. And he and the Lord had a little altercation. You know who's going to win. And the Lord said, Moses, let me show you how bad I am. Now you know this got to be a bad black Lord. Because when, when Lords talk about how bad they are, you got to be a black Lord. Talking like a real Harlem boy. Bed for seven boy. Say, Moses, I'm going to show you a trick. You're so damn bad, I'm going to show you how bad I am. The Lord says, stick your hand in your bosom, and I'll show you a miracle. And the book said, what? And he pulled his hand out, and it had turned white. Stop. <laughs> if it was white when he put it in there, and it had turned white, the Lord was jiving. 
It didn't say it was black, but we know it wasn't white. Now to make sure, I'm not talking about white folks. His sister Miriam got smart. And she's going to act up. I don't want you to marry that girl from Ethiopia. Now that's your book. It's strange I'm quoting your book. And all of you got a white Jesus in your house. Most of you, not all. And Miriam said, look, 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 Moses, you can't marry that girl she with. He said, look, those girls up in Ethiopia are ours. And he went out and got married because Moses was a good man. He had a cup. He married nothing but holy girls, high priest daughters. He said, Miriam, I'm going to show you. The Lord walked, Lord again. And he turned a what? White with leprosy. Now, these are two members of the Holy Family turn white. Are we to assume that the parents was white if they turned them white? Well, we get off the Lord because you're going to get mad and I want you to go home and sleep. So, we leave the Lord for a while. But where do we get it? Where do we get the story of Moses? A copy from the stories of Horus. Horus, the young boy, who the king wanted to kill, the king of the gods, wanted to kill. And his mother, a set which you call Isis, not the blonde one from Hollywood, took him down to the same Nile River, put him in a papyrus basket. Hundreds of years, thousands of years later, the Jews copied the story and changed it. I, I, I should tell you, the Haribo, because Jew is a, a member of the tribe of Judah. But you swallowed hook, line, and sinker. We got to look at how we are damaged mentally. Let's go to church tomorrow, so, Sunday, and we're going to sing, Make me whiter than snow, O Lord. Now, you may be, because you may be lighter than me, you got a chance, but how the hell am I going to get whiter than snow? But it isn't bad enough. You're going to get more ridiculous than that. Wash me in the blood of the lamb, and I'll be whiter than snow. Now I'm black like this. Then you wash me with red blood, and I become whiter than snow. You're crazy. But they can tell you that and you find nothing wrong with it because you don't know yourself. You don't know your history. And that's when, when you come and tell me that umpteen white cops start to shoot and you get a stake out with white cops and one black one. Like all the other black ones used to be shot up on 7th Avenue all the time. Every time a black a cop gets shot by mistake, it's a black cop. Yeah. The funny thing is that some of us don't see it fun, nothing wrong with it because it's a cop. And we separate ourselves from the cop. But look at yourself. You are that cop. You don't have to be in a police force because when they shoot a black cop, they will shoot a black porter, a black president, a black engineer. <laughs> we have to understand what the totality of the struggle that we have is not classified by profession or by class. There's a man named Lewis just died the other day. 500 million on one transaction, but still they were doing him in. You know, when I was at Cornell teaching, professor, other professors used to say, but Ben, you never say our university. I said, because there's no our, it's the university. I work here. And every two weeks they pay me. If they don't, I raise ass. You understand? I never got the, uh, the opinion to believe this is mine. 
because of knowing my history down to the ages of what happened. It's like celebrating Columbus Day. Cristobal Colón. I remember Columbus because I remember at the same time another Eng an Englishman, Burton, who found the source, he discovered the source of the Nile. Africans bringing his luggage up the stream, one in front guiding the group. Come, Burton, come, here it is. <laughs> the indigenous people you call Indians, and the damn fool didn't even know there wasn't Indian, Columbus set out with Pietro Olanzo Nino the admiral of the fleet of five ships because the Moors ruled Spain from 711 to 1485 and, he, and it was his ship. He was placed in command of the ship. Columbus was only placed in command of the expedition. And we seem to forget that he even called, considered Cuba, Sipango, Japan. A dumb Italian. <laughs> they say you shouldn't say Italian and you shouldn't say a Jew from Texas. But they say a black, a Negro, a colored, a nigger from so so and so. But why can't we say? They, we say ghetto. We live in the ghetto. Did we coin the phrase ghetto at NYU? No, we didn't. Did all of these things. We talk about what? in the diaspora. Did we coin the fame diaspora? Who did it to us? Because again, because again we did not know his, if we knew that the first building built by man out of stone was an African in the third dynasty, again we come to the Pharaoh Zusa, the first, third Pharaoh of the third dynasty. Where was Europe during those days? History has no record of Europe in those days. No records of the Arabs in those days. There were no people there on that peninsula called Arabs. They were called Saracens. The Saracens were the people at the peninsula now called Arabs. People who come down from the Caucasus mountain, the Caucasus mountain, integrated, and that's an ugly word, amalgamated, another ugly word, they raped the woman down there. <laughs> no talking. Every time white people rape, it is integrated, amalgamated. Every time they got TB, it, it, it is a deep cold, pneumonia. I get a little cold, TB. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> I don't worry because knowing self, I walk with my hair, head up and cloud nine. And I walk with my head up and cloud nine. You think it's because I'm looking for the rain. No, I'm looking where I left my woman. And cloud nine. You put thousand pipers on the top shelf. I put thousand black women on the top shelf. You got a problem finding a good black woman. I got a problem getting away from good black women. <laughs> and, and the reason I have that problem is that I love this. My daddy was a wise man. He picked out a woman that got this. So that I could come this way. When I go to the hospital, I never ask, I want to see what my child looks like. I know what a child looks like. Because if I go up there and he look like that, he ain't going home. <laughs> Why? Why is that? I know that because when I was performing medical science, go back to the papyrus of whoever, go back to the Evers papyrus. Dealing with Planned Parenthood. You hear um, what a guy named uh, Clinton that fell up there. 
He's supposed to be dealing with an order to tell a woman she got a right to deal with her body. I thought that was all. Any jackass knows that, that a woman's body belongs to the woman. But, but I mean, it take a president to figure that out. Maybe, maybe come to the conclusion with blowing the job in the socks. Now, now, uh, it is a good instrument. It is a good instrument to be blowing when he's considering women's uh, reproductive organs. Now, now, because there's a paper, a medical paper called, listen to this, the Rockefeller Files. When did the Rockefellers get a paper in ancient Egypt? There was another one called the Goodfellow Paper, the Edwin C. Smith Paper. When did Edwin C. Smith and Rockefeller? This is thousands of years before there's a European country. They are the thieves, like in the museums here. What would happen if the Africans take their artifacts out of the museums in Europe, in America, both Americas, North and South, and take them back to Africa? There wouldn't be nothing for you to go to see your cousins. And that is, and that is the, the crux of the matter. When you go to the museum down the street here in Brooklyn, down by Grand Army Plaza, Plaza there, I've been there. Now they're showing you the Nubian exhibit. And you're looking for one Nubian. Here's a Nubian exhibit and nobody Nubian is there. Except you're coming to visit. And they're going to tell you about you. And you're leaving. Oh, wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> I was entertained. You happy? You happy? I was counting the amount of commissioners in our city government. Black ones. And I, I, I couldn't reach the, the, the five fingers. I said, one, two, six, one. Trying to get to a, a five. Oh, no, you see, we, we, are, we want the mosaic. We want, a music, we want a beautiful mosaic. Everybody has, don't worry about that damn mosaic. They appoint their own. When the Germans were there, the, most of the commissioners were Germans. When the Irish were there, most of the commissioners were Irish. When the Jews were there, most of the commissioners were Jews. Now, Koch was there, and his holdovers become our commissioners. I mean, I like to tell it like it is. And I know it isn't popular. But what good is history if we can't relate it to our present condition? What good is history if all we're going to do is become amused by it? History is not a thing of the past. It may have happened one millisecond before my word. However, it determines what's going to happen now and in the future. Thus, it's important. You will not go down to the street or try to go to another country without at least a passport or a birth certificate. It tells who you are. And the reason they could put Negro and your birth certificate is that when you got married, you put Negro. Aligned with all of the major mon monuments at Warit, now called Karnak, all the way down to Abyssinbal. So that last, a, a few months ago, when they unearthed it, when they dug up, the oldest building in human history has been dug up. 9,000 years old, only 6,000 years before Adam and Eve. Somebody has been here before Adam and Eve and Steve and all of them. But no. Again, we're going to the Holy Land. So one of us packed going to Jerusalem. One of us packed going to Beth Bethlehem. One of us packed going to Mecca. How come none of us is packed going to Abydos? And Abydos was called a holy land 
more than 5,000 years before you had anything in Jerusalem. You didn't even have a place called Jerusalem. And Abidus is there. I'm not telling you something that is historically got to go to a piece of paper. Again, I will carry you there. But the funny thing is you're not coming. Because you got to see your cousins in France, in England, in Ireland, Scotland, Israel, Mecca. You can't come to Africa. Because you may see yourself in your glory and get frightened and die. <laughs> because you know why? One of your famous words, a nigger ain't shit. And when you say it, the veins here stand up to attention. You need a chief and a brigade to get it, your vein down. You do like this, and nigga ain't shit. And if they won, you won. You write the nigga ain't shit, I ain't shit. I am great. We have gotten to the point of not knowing ourselves that much that I hear young men and coming on the subway talking to young women. Bitch, come here. The sad part of it is, the young lady come back and, what you want, baby? <laughs> young women answering young men as bitch. That's the stage in which we have come. We have gone so far in the depths that we could call the mother of ourselves bitch. The potential mothers we feel comfortable of saying, bitch. Don't talk bad about that. I went to Lamoine College to give a lecture. And I was coming in from the airport. And sisters were pledging. You know how I felt when I walked seeing that, just to see them trying to come Greeks. What the hell? Even the Greeks said, that the gods came from Ethiopia, Zeus and Apollo. Go read a Homer's Odyssey. And as I drove in, some fool called attention. And the girls them did this. And she said, spread. The girls did this. Drop it. And each girl shake and a red drawers they red jaws, oversized red jaws fall. You tell me that we have reached so low that this is the way we expose our women. And nobody saw. The president of the college saw nothing wrong with it. The dean. The academic dean saw nothing wrong with it. Of course, you know, as I got up after eating the steak and everything, my first statement was to the jackasses that caused our women to be so humiliated to the point that not one of those girls was sophisticated enough to know they were being insulted. Here is the woman that is shown in Egypt, the African woman, as goddess Nut, with God of air. She's the goddess of the heaven or the sky. Under her is held Goddess Shu, God of the air. On the earth is God Geb, God of the earth. In Geb is, uh, Goddess Shu is holding Goddess Nut at the two columns of heaven. What do they show as the two columns of heaven? He has one hand on her breast and one hand and her vagina, the two columns of heaven. I know you, you can't deal with that, brothers. You can't deal with that because you put your foot in her. Bitch, get your ass here. Come on, bring your black ass here. Let's deal with it. You know it, you are officers. You got fights you got to go to. 
brothers and sisters fighting, stab you sometimes, brother Bellin, my friend went to break up one of them, and the sister turned on him. The man done black up her eye, he turned, she turned on the police. We understand why. And we, we, we got to deal with that. And the only way we're going to deal with it is knowing the greatness of our women. Hmm? I said the other day in one of my pamphlets, and a sister spat in my face one day about it. I said, heaven is between a black woman's legs. I see some of you shocked. Some of you are shocked. Even some of you sisters are shocked because you know that man gone crazy now. <laughs> because you have never considered yourself anything much. So when I say heaven is between a black woman's leg and you're a black woman and you got legs and don't know that they have heaven, I ask you then, where was your baby? Wasn't it in heaven? It's a dark, what it said, your Bible said, it's a dark pit full of brine. Isn't your placenta a dark pit full of brine? Doesn't it have to do with your child? Yes, my mama is heaven. I don't, I just had a celebration of a birthday on December 31st. Not my birthday. That's when my mother pushed me out. It's her birthing day. Her birthday. But we took on the European. And when the African celebrate his mother and birth and kneel down in front of his mother and put her head face forward to her womb and then she correct the young man or the young woman telling him all the bad things he did. Give him a few cough here and there. And then she start to give the joy. And you did this. Oh, I love you for it. And so on. But we have been taught to be egotistical. Mine. I'm doing my thing. To hell with you. Because since you can't even give credit to the woman that gave birth to you, it is your day. You forgot. All she needed was a pill or a, ha a, a hot pin. And if that didn't work, the day when you come across her leg and break your damn neck. <laughs> no, this is what we are saying. We've got to go back. I know time is a passing, uh, and God gives time for the question and answer period. But we are talking. Time doesn't permit us to go down to item after item as what we did. No, last let us go now. Let us go when we start to educate the same people that say that we are inferior. If they believe that they are superior, why is it that when one of us come in a whole crowd, if this was none but white folks, and I walk up here and stand up, everybody get diarrhea. <laughs> one little me scared the whole hell out of all of them. Then, I mean, if you're superior, how I, how I mess you up that bad? <laughs> no, they know. They know that when the Moors came, they had no school of higher learning until the Africans came there in 711 and established the University of Salamanca in Spain. They know they had no mathematics until Guido the monk went there from Egypt. They know that there was no philosophy from Thales in 500 BC all the way down to Aristotle. Each one, you see them coming to Egypt to study. Pythagoras gave a, 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 a silver goblet and said they had to go so much, to choose so much pain. They were going at 40 and 50 years of age to get teaching until the Alexander, the son of Macedonia, they're nothing great about that bastard. I don't know what you are calling him great for. He's great because he killed Asians and Africans. Nobody called Hitler the great. 
because he killed Europeans. But Alexander came, he and Aristotle sucked the grand lodge of all of its works, carried down to what is called Alexandria, a city that built in his name, established the Periapatic school, brought in the Greeks from all over and raided the school. And now you tell me I'm a Greek. I'm Alpha, Bapa, Dapa, Gaga, Gaba, Shapa, Sheta. Some goddamn nonsense like that. Because you don't know yourself. There is no name you can use from your neighborhood only to show your tail. You can't sit to my table. You're not a Bapa. And you can't sit to my table, you're not a lapper. But he's one that taught the goddamn Greeks. His daddy, your daddy, your mama taught the Greeks that you're trying to be like. But you don't know. You don't know. You've been watching Washington, D.C., and you watch Clinton and all the other jivas turkeys. Huh? And you feel good because he plays saxophone and ass in you. Uh, ass, ass in you. <laughs> but you are proud. You are proud of him because the Rhodes Scholar. Stop. Who the hell was Rhodes? Rhodes was a worst racist mate out of Hitler and the Playboy yeah. in South Africa. He killed more. Africans than Adolf Hitler know they were Europeans. And black men also take rose color. Can you imagine, can you manage a Jew taking an Adolf Eichmann scholarship? No, but you will take any scholarship. Don't care what it symbolizes. It symbolizes your mama, your daddy. The deprivation, the death, the murder. You talk about Holocaust. What about your brothers and sisters, the Tasmanians? Not one left. What about yourself? What about your Holocaust? In the triangular trade. And you watched the celebration. But don't know if I asked you to go to see the celebration. You wouldn't know whose street you're walking in. Who laid it out. You would think that George Washington laid it out. It's a pity that when Phoebe Francis had a chance of letting, uh, what is that name, Tamasiki, kill George Washington, she didn't allow it. It's a pity. Yeah, you ask him when. Phoebe Francis was the daughter of Sam Francis from Haiti. By the way, Haiti. Oh, yeah, you like all the world people, but you're not Haitian. You ain't got a part, nothing to do with the Haitians. But that's your first cousin. The first place you were brought to the West was Hispaniola, not all Haiti. I told you you're great. If you know it. They say a mind is a terrible thing to waste only if you got one. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm proud. I'm a proud black man. Call me nigger colored. I'm proud. Because when you call me, don't mean a damn thing. It's what I call me. Yeah? It is Banneker. Benjamin Banneker. Who laid out Washington, D.C. Yeah. When George Washington decided to do what he was had to do, and only one exception was Benjamin Franklin. Remember, it is because they had stolen 22 tablets from Egypt and started what they call Freemasonry. They, after that, they added 11, what they call effable degrees, poke, jive talking degrees. That's the political degrees where you could pay off and get rich. Got nothing to do with the worship of God. I'm in Ra. And at the end of your every pray, you still gone Egyptian, still gone Nubian, still gone Ethiopian. Amen. 
When you sing in church, amen. You still worship in the God, amen. And don't know, somebody tell it means so good. My brothers and my sisters, you know I hate to have to stop. Because I get a high. I'm drugged up right now. I don't use I don't use marijuana. I don't use any of the other things. Speed, slow down, any of them. Because I'm high. I get a high. I get a high watching black women. I get a high. Get a high talking to black men. I don't need all those stimulants. I get a high knowing me. And you got the same high as yours. My high is your high. There's nothing unique about me that isn't unique about you. There's probably only one thing. I know it. And probably you don't. But there's no reason why you can't. Like I said, I don't need any money. I would lead. I would lead a tour of guardians to Egypt. I'm going to at least expect you to pay my fare. And I'll take two weeks, three to any amount you want, and I'll take you through the entire caboodle. Some of you have been there already. Cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you anything to know your history and mine. If I cannot do this for my people, then I'm a phony. And the Guardian don't have to worry. Right down the street, there's a place called Alcantor's. I'm going to get, uh, uh, this is your responsibility. You work with your committee, I get you with Shifre, it's going to cost, only cost, there's no profit. To take a delegation of brothers and sisters of the Guardian, and we're going to see when your ancestors produce law and order, put it on the walls and the ceilings. As the man says, what, 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 uh, what the guy used to say, oh, God, I feel so unnecessary. You know, it's good. It's a good feeling to know yourself. Men, know thyself. And there it is at the temple of Karnak, long before it get on the temple of Delphi in Greece. My brothers and my sisters, if I was not placed in the womb of my mother, a black woman, I would have been angry with God. I would have said, why do you want to do this to me? Why are you going to pass the greatest thing on earth and give me second place? And I told my father, man, you crazy? Didn't you see that black woman passing? But then I, 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 I know, I got I to gotta, I gotta take a little pity on the brother because I finally found out what's better than a black woman. Two black women. <laughs> so now you know where I stand. Yeah? I am a damn fool for a black woman. I work my knees out, my elbow out, my brain out for a black woman. When we get to the point that we will worship our black women, we will not need the guardian anymore. Dr. Ben, ladies and gentlemen. Go for Dr. Ben one more time.
We're going to start the question and answer period. So I ask all of those of you who have any questions or answers, please line up here in a single file behind the microphone to get ready to present your question. One question per person, please. And don't, don't be afraid to line up and ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, a copy of this videotape, this was the segment was videotape, can be purchased from Transatlantic Productions. The address is 616 East 23rd Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11210. The telephone number is area code 718-859. 4046. And the person to contact is Durrell. That's D U R E L L E. Or Rainey. R E N I E. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you was aware coming in. Um, outside in the lobby here, we have a, a collection of books to be purchased. Um, it would be deeply appreciated if you do purchase some of these books. Um, the lecturing is fine, but you're not going to learn it all from lecturing. We're going to have to read. There's no doubt about that. There's also a suggested reading literature on the table outside that you can pick up to, to canvas over, take with you, and then possibly purchase some of these books. Take them home. Don't put them on your shelf, but read them. And now we'll start the question and answer period with one question per person. Um, These are still used in the Ethiopian church. It's called the Ethiopian Orthodox Church now. It used to be called Coptic Church, but because Ethiopia have more Copts than Egypt now, and demand that the Abuna, the head of the church, be in Ethiopia, and Egypt refused, Ethiopia broke away and called her church now instead of the Coptic Church. They call it the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, and they, all of the uh, the um, rituals and everything is done in Giz. There is the 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 Bible in Giz, and. Uh, the, the, the language called Cop, or Cop, for the people of Coptus, is used in uh, Egypt uh, by the Copts. Uh, by the way, the Copts still use the 13 month calendar, uh, uh, 12 months of 30 days each, and one month of five days. Yes, sir. My question. I wish I could tell you, but I, I, one of the things I am not is a prophet. I, ha I haven't met one. I know a lot of people that say they are, but I, when you can prophesy, I want date and I want the time and place. And since nobody is able to do that, I, I am not going to attempt to. I could make a, 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 because when you say African people all over the world, you got to remember that you're talking about uh, over 100 and other African nations. You got to include many nations in the South Pacific, like Vanuatu. Uh, by the way, I give you an example to see what happening that we don't know. You know, there is an embassy, a foreign embassy in the black neighborhood in Harlem. The nation of Vanuatu have their embassy at 140, 100 and, uh, 147th Street on Convent Avenue, right on the corner. They, they, they took, the people of Vanuatu took an African American by the name of Van Lu and made him the ambassador for that country, an African country in the Pacific. They used to call it New Hebrides, now called Vanuatu. So, that, so we, we move in, uh, all over uh, African countries have African-American, African-Caribbean people working in government in different positions. Even Blyden died in a position, Du Bois died in Ghana in a position. Uh, the ambassador from uh, Uganda was married to a sister from here and all kind of thing going on. Yes, ma'am. How can we as African people regain our history? Because we have so deeply brainwashed. Well, like you said, you're doing it tonight, and you have done it before, I'm sure. Uh, you need just some more research, constant reading, but visit. Uh, there is nothing to beat the actual site. Visit. Go and see what your ancestors did. 
I was um, talking to a man the other day, and he says uh, that Weaver was the first black man in, a president, in the president's cabinet. I told him, my brother, sorry to disappoint you. The first black man in the cabinet of any president was in the president of, uh, cabinet of George Washington, the first cabinet, a man by the name of Alexander Hamilton, whose grandmother was an African, uh, African woman who had made slave and lived in the island of Nevis. His grandfather was an uh, uh, Englishman. When Alexander grew up, he was sent to the island of St. Croix, uh, then the Danish Virgin Islands. It's bought by the United States in 1918 for $25 million, the tree island. And he grew up there in the children's home. From there, he came to the United States and became the treasurer, first treasurer of the United States. He the first black man in the, ca in the cabinet was in the first cabinet. And, and by the way, just go around and, and study and, and keep. Buy an uh, easy book, J.A. Rogers. You know, we don't say much about J.A. Rogers because he had no PhDs behind his name, no M's, no S, and so forth. But we sleep, J. Rogers, we slept a lot of these brothers and sisters who had no D's behind it, no Greek names and titles. But when we were paying no attention, those are the men that kept our history going. They were the great servants. Unfortunately, when black studies came on the campus, we didn't do it because we had to follow the European, we had to have the PhDs and not these at all. Yes, sir. I've never heard you speak before, but your speech is very enlightening. Thank you, sir. Um, one question. I have a 14 year old son, right? And this is for him and all the other young brothers in the street, right? He's, a, he's very angry, right? And I would like to know, you know, what would you say to a young brother in the street, you know? Well, I am an angry man. You heard me tonight. I'm angry. I'm as angry as a guy out there with a pit bull. I'm angry as a guy out there with a Saturday night special or a Uzi or whatever they call it. I channel my anger to change my people and myself. Every policeman or policewoman in the Guardian is angry. The chief here has to be angry. He catch more racism than they do. The higher you go, the more the racism. But he challenges his anger. I, I, don't, I don't want him to get up, get up and testify because we are brothers. We know what's happening. Okay? Your little son, take him. Get, Take him to a member of the Guardian Society. They got meetings and they got uh, things for youngsters. Let him see. Let him, let him go and see a prostitute, how she works. Well, I got uh, eight daughters. Uh, I didn't just lecture alone. Uh, <laughs> and I got four biological sons too. And I used to carry my daughter park in the, by the Braddock Hotel. It's no longer there now. In the snow coming down, I have sit down and I said to each of them, look, that's a prostitute. Look how she, the snow is 25 degrees above zero. Look at her and how she's making a living. You want to be that? Then I will carry them to schools. I carry them churches, synagogue, mosque. I didn't take any one of them and said, no, these are the side. Here is an engineer in the building. Here is a doctor. Your father is a, is a, is a PhD. And I showed them members of the family and others. I said, no, pick your choice. After you reach a certain age, I'm going to loose, turn you loose, put the key in your pocket. You are on your own. Take that little boy. Give him an apprenticeship. Take him around. Carry him to the, if you, don't, you can't know everything, but put him in the hands of those who know each other. If you want to know about law, put him in the hands of a police. You want to know about crook? Put him in the hands of a crook, if that's what you want. But I think the police should know enough about crook because they catch them. <laughs> but that's it, my brother. Practice. But you got to do it. You can't pray it. You could go into church a hundred million times, get on your knees. Nothing going to happen. You've got to do it.
Good evening, sir. I tell you a joke about that. I went to Brazil. I had been there as a youngster at seven, and I went back as a man. And they told me that uh, at the favela, that I would see, uh, uh, I could get a nice looking woman. So I went and looked at this one, and that one passed, and she, uh, that one was better. The next one passed, it was better. By nightfall, it was time to go home, and I ain't got none. So, so pick out, pick out one. <laughs> Let me make this clear and you have to listen each and every one of you. I would never have gone one millimeter of an inch any place with Dr. Martin Luther King. Listen carefully, but I will celebrate his day of honor because he died for me. Now listen, clear, keep listening. I believe if you're going to treat me with violence, I got violence for you behind. Therefore, I wouldn't have gone with King. I would have gone with Garvey or Malcolm. But Martin Luther King equally died for me. His methodology. I didn't like because I'm not going to say that not, anybody hit me because I know just like they are now, Coretta want them to build a statue to Gandhi. She didn't know Gandhi when he was in South Africa. But she forget, she, again history, Gandhi didn't start uh, 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 nonviolence. He read Akhenaten. Akhenaten is called the father of nonviolence. He got rid of his army in Egypt so much put his cousin, Simon Kari, to rule simultaneously with him, let the cousin did the executive matters of the state while he pursued nonviolence. So I hope you got it clear, what I've said, because you can always hear it the wrong way. Let me read it in capsule form. I did not believe in a nonviolent campaign of Dr. King, because there's no way that Bull Connor was going to put a dog on my woman, and I didn't try to shoot him or pay a junkie to shoot him. You know, get it clear. Looking for any dream. I'm not Jesse Jackson. I'm not, look, he dreamed, uh, 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 you see, uh, Clinton tell him there's no more dream for you up here. They, they give one on Jordan who got shot in his penis. They give him a dream. He could dream about being, getting a shot of penis. It's straight. You see, uh, uh, again, with due respect to Dr. King, due respect to Dr. King, I, I respect him as a brother who sincerely believed he was freeing me, but I couldn't follow his methodology. Peace, brother. Oh, why not? Greetings, my brother. Uh, I'm curious about one thing. Growing up, I hear that the black race is the original race. In that sense, I wonder, did the white race come about as a mutation from the black race, or was it due to geographical reasons? My brother, based upon the behavior in this society, I wish I knew the answer. And I don't want to speculate, because I, I don't believe in speculation. I'm, as an Egyptologist, as you know, I am like uh, I'm a member of the Guardian. I, I'm a policeman who traced down crimes, the crime of history, and I don't want to create uh, a hearsay and alarm. I don't know how men get here except from a woman. I cannot tell you. There are all kinds of theories. There's the anthropological theory of man evolving. If so, how come I don't have a vagina? 
I don't think I could get knocked off my penis with some wee wee. I don't think I could get knocked off my anus and sometimes if it get hard, I got trouble. So therefore, if, if there was a first people, it was a woman. So you see, you see, already you're all mad with me. But then I try to use my little logic. See, some brothers got problem with this because they want their ego don't stop them. Some brother said, man, when I made a baby, where you made a baby? <laughs> you passed some sperms. All the sister had to do is wash you out. <laughs> if you could make a baby with that sperm, drop it on the ground, let, let it jump up. <laughs> no. It needs that sister. If that sister don't pass them beautiful eggs coming down there to meet that beautiful sperm and have this massive bang inside that fallopian tube and go down in heaven. Huh? And, and come out ten months later. That's what did the trick. No, brother. I don't know. And nobody knows. I know that the oldest, now hear this, see? The oldest known fossil human found in the world to date. See how I protect myself? Yeah, because I want, when the rumor got, I want to hit straight. Is a woman called Deknesh. The West call her Lucy. 3.2 million years old. The oldest man found to date is the skeleton of a man. Uh, Deknesh is found in Ethiopia. A man found in Olduvai Gorge in Tanganyika, now called Tanzania. He is 1.7 million years old. So, I mean, brother, and that, that's up to date. You know, they got older one yet. So if, if you would say, more than likely, it's an African, because we know that life, to be procreated, comes from, have to have heat. Like Dr. Jeffrey said, they don't, what they made, it don't come from the Iceland. <laughs> About mutation, I don't know. I, I guess you would say that the migration of men outside of the hot climate, but then the Asian will say to you, the people in India will say to you, we come from the hot climate. I mean, if you want to see black people, you know, Africa ain't got a monopoly. You could go all around the world, Panama, you go right down the equator in Panama, well, all right, they came from Barbados and Jamaica and all them kind of places. Uh, you could go to and the Congo, you could go, uh, let's go right over to Vanuatu. Uh, 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 let's go to North Solomon. The North Solomon, brothers and sisters, are so black that the palm of the hand, black. The only thing aimed black is the na fingernail and the teeth, uh, the eyeballs. Other than that, the completely black till the blue. I took some picture, in a, not, not, I've been there up and down, took some picture of some Tuvaran people and North Solomon people, and they were under a tree. And they came out blue, with a blue sheen. I I, I'm not joking, with a blue sheen. They are so black against the, the green of their tree that it, it made a blue sheen. But I, I, I was traveling, and the government, uh, first class. I got to see when I said first class, I got to clarify it. Uh, and the sister was serving in first class. And the sister, you know, got the sarong and she came. And she said, Can I help you? I look, Oh, God. <laughs> to be an Egyptologist in Egypt to function under, with government protection, you need uh, specific training as a uh, degree or in, in some field. You need your linguistics. You have to speak at least three, uh, and read and write at least three uh, foreign languages. Namely, one you must write is Greek. Uh, you should have a little Latin, but that's not important. German and French. And English, of course, because many of the European writers, and let's, let's deal with it, uh, wrote in those languages. And of course, you must uh, learn to read at least uh, two of the indigenous ancient languages, uh, well, I said two modes of the Mendelian language. You have to learn the hieratic and the dematic writing to decipher for yourself. Unfortunately, Egyptology 
doesn't pay good. Even at the height of my career uh, at the university, the, the best I made, and that was 1987, was $40,000 a year. And, that, that, and I had to fly every day, every week to Cornell. I fly up on, on Monday and fly back on Wednesday every week for 18 years. Uh, $40,000, what that? Uh, my, 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 my daughter came out of school. Uh, my daughter came out of school uh, and uh, <laughs> made about like 60, 70,000. Right, got a school and summer job for that. So it's got to be, it's, to be an Egyptologist, you, only institutions hire you. Uh, universities, museums, etc. So it is not a lucrative field, and most, uh, and all, so far, uh, African Americans, African Caribbeans, and Africans at home uh, don't bother with this field because, as I said, the reward isn't in the sense of material things. You have to make up your mind that uh, you have sufficient. Uh, and I, th I think that a person making 40000 a year should be supporting somebody else also. Uh, for instance, in, in Daboud Village, many of you have been there. Uh, now we are producing this year the first medical doctor from the village. They have Nubian doctors from the cities, but none of them from the village. But she had to promise that when she finished, her medical school and she's going to finish this year. She has to do her in two years internship there. Plus, she had to sign up with me for giving the money all these years that she's going to be the doctor in the village. She's going to stay there, live there, marry there, and everything like that. Uh, you, you, what I'm saying is we need Egyptologists to make the interpretation. Here we've got a city just found, the, the, down at, uh, 50 miles from a symbol. They just found... In, in out at Abydos, in the hills, in the mountain, they found ten solar boats, brand new, in in a in a in a in a, in a cave like, uh, in the hills, brand new. They just found uh, a new a new pyramid, not new. Uh, they just found a pyramid. You say how they could find a pyramid? Because in the Hamasin, the dust, the dirt, move from one place to the and cover up this pyramid for years. Is the pyramid of, of Mut went the the, the queen of, one of the most favorite queen of uh, Pepe the second, that would be the sixth dynasty. Uh, but not one African involved with any of this. I can, I can only go to one here when they're doing something there. One person. I start to train the Nubian brothers and the government tell me, what are you going to do with them? I say, I go work with them. He said, because they can't be an Egyptologist unless they go to university through the whole rigmarole. Uh, well, well, time tells. They will get, they'll be Egyptologists. Uh, uh, I said, there are many ways to skin a cat without putting in hot, besides putting in hot water. Now, they, but they're going to have to be in, in the Nubian territory. They could go in Sudan, uh, down by Naga, at the Lion Temple, since that is in their hand. And I trained, like in Papua New Guinea, I, tr I use high school students to start a museum there because they said you have to have a college degree to start up to be in a museum. But I asked the, the people there, are you building a museum for the Europeans or are you building a museum for yourself? So th they said the, the, the labels have to be in Latin and or Greek. I said, there are no Greeks or Latin here. It's going to be in... in um, uh, Bislam, that's the language they speak. It's a mixture of the indigenous language and English. It's called Bislam. And we put the titles in Bislam. The people kind of complain. I said, that's what you do? Put brackets right underneath and put the Greek word. But we got the museum is there. You, in your own place, you do what you want. He who pays the fiddler calls the tune. And that's until... Until we are able, until we make up our mind, we are able, based upon the amount of money we're spending. Until we do the things we got to do. If you, if my daughter wants to get married now and have her wedding in an air-conditioned place, where in Harlem she's going? I got to go downtown to a white man. Is that rational? Is that rational with the amount of money we spend for booze? 
They tell me, is it that rational amount of money we spend for drugs? No, let us build, let us do in our community. There's nothing wrong with having rich people in our community. And let the rich and, and us work together and build things. What happens is that we refuse to use the word corporate body. All of us together, not 5,000 people, but 20 with this cooperation, 10 with that cooperation, five with that cooperation. But no, we don't trust each other. We only trust the minister going with the money Monday morning to a white bank. And the money go downtown, spend around all the place and don't come back to us. No, we, 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 that's why you see they were so willing to kill Freedom National. It isn't that they have done so, so bad. I mean, Bush's son took off a whole bank. And they slapped him and said, don't do that again. <laughs> yes, sir. In the scripture, I am a bit confused. Which, 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 which Bible? Jewish? No, it can't be any. Jewish, Christian, or Muslim? Christian, okay. Me too. I'm dumbfounded because it doesn't make sense. If God got the intelligence to make a woman after after creating, look at the create. See in the, in the in the first in the first page, it is God made a woman and a man and sent them out to multiply. But God got a second change of heart. That's Genesis 1. Genesis 2, God is going to create the, the man still. The man going to be lonely. How the hell is he lonely? He didn't know nothing about nothing. He get lonely. And God lose the formula of creation, so he make a woman out of Adam's rib cage, taking a rib cage. Okay, that's all right. But then God made the animals and bring them for the man to name them. But in Genesis 1, he made the animals before he made the man. Okay, how are we going to happen? You remade the world again? Let's stop again. And, and Eve knew her husband. She was married. Who, who was the preacher? I mean, where did she get the license? No, no, okay. That second thought, you know, uh, they, they said that little children who born from a mother and father and they don't have a marriage paper are illegitimate bastards. Work with me. Does Mary have a marriage certificate? Up to now, did she get a marriage certificate? And Jesus had brothers and sisters. You know, the, don't feel bad, brother. The Bible is allegories and mythology. Allegory and mythology. Now, you could blow your mind over that if you want. Take it for what it's worth. If it don't make sense, leave it alone. If it makes sense, use it. I pray all the time, Lord, give my woman enough brain that when I'm sick, to treat me good. Lord, I know you mess up there trying to hold the sun from bumping into the moon. I ain't got no time messing with me, no goddamn thing, but a new shirt and a new car. I am not going to waste your time with all that damn nonsense when I got a good woman here and I'm a good man. I'm going up, go get it. Now, Lord, go back to sleep. I don't need your help. You are battering the man or the woman or them. What's going to happen when somebody die and go to heaven and find that God is a Puerto Rican woman drinking Irish whiskey. <laughs> a lot of you men gonna be sad. You gonna try to leave heaven and go mess up with the devil. No, man. Look, religion is a belief of men. It's a very glorious thing. I love religion, but understand what it is. 
It is a desire hope. Man doesn't know the answer. He's grouping. It says, I believe in God. If, not I know. I believe. To believe is the absence of knowledge. It's indeterminate. And we, we treat it as if we know the answer. And so we kill the Muslim killing the Christian, the Christian killing the Buddhist, the Buddhist killing the Jew, and everybody killing because they got the only answer. If they have the only answer, how come they got to kill somebody else? Leave it alone, brother. Otherwise, it's going to send you crazy. You go over to, to Triborough Bridge there and look on the right-hand side going over. See that 12-story building? All kind of people will blow their mind. Uh, sisters, a sister. I, I, I used to go over and do volunteer work. Think about half of the places, sisters, who have had one sexual in, uh, encounter, and then the minister or somebody or mother found out, and she got to get up in front of the audience of a church and testified that she's a sinner, she's dirty, that she had sex. Why not? Damn, she old enough. <laughs> and she don't have sex and ain't get married, she should stay there. 80 years old, the damn thing. Cancer go and eat it up anyhow. Dr. Joseph Ben Yorkinen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you patronize the vendors in the back, and we'd like to thank them for coming. Our book, Enterprise Books, Fine Brown Frames, and Food on the Sister Nadzija.